Hey guys, STL Youngblood here, and I'm going to be making some videos going through all of my secondary weapons and how I kit out the whole setup, as well as kind of my preferred play style and flight style. Now, there's no right style or loadout to use. However, there's ones that I've kind of chosen to use uh, that kind of go along with it. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. You know, I could probably ramble and ramble about this stuff, um, so I'm going to try and keep this a little bit more consolidated, and we're going to start out with one that's going to be called the Ambush Setup. Now, I hadn't used coyotes for a while, so I decided to use them a bit lately, and this is where we're going to start, with the coyotes. Now, coyotes are kind of a unique creature, because at long ranges, they're only moderately effective, and that's really going to be determined by how well you can lead your targets, and how erratically your target is flying. So, when you're flying in close proximity, though, they're great, and the ability to fire, switch to your nose gun, and then come back to your yotes after you've exhausted your nose gun, uh, really makes the time to kill on them really, really fast. So based on this, my recommended primary to accompany the Coyotes is the Empire-specific AA nose cannons, or the uh, rotaries. Now, on the primary, I use thermal, mag size upgrade, and ammo upgrades. Uh, on the Coyotes, I use the reload speed and the ammo upgrades like you would expect. Now, the scope is really going to be totally up to you. You can go with the thermal to spot targets on the ground because it is going to do damage against ground targets in dumb fire mode. However, that's not really the playstyle that we're working on with this. So I, I actually didn't really spend any certs on Nanoptic. I just didn't really see a point, so I don't use them. But I guess you could use Zoom, and that could be an acceptable um, alternative for cheap at longer ranges to see how far off your shots are. It's all really going to be preference, but you know that nothing there is really required. Now, you're not going to be using afterburners, so you're less maneuverable overall against someone with the external tanks. So I prefer to get the jump on someone instead of going straight up in a dogfight. Now, because of this, the defensive slot that I recommend is Stealth. Um, this is going to help keep you off the minimap and allow you to get up on your target without them knowing that you're actually there. With the super fast time to kill being effective at closer ranges, the piece is at, that piece is actually really, really crucial. So get close without being noticed is the goal. Now, you're going to want to get close to your target, so external afterburner tanks would be a great alternative, but you have coyotes instead. So to make up for that, I will use the Racer airframe. Now, with the recent buff to the racer frame, um, you're much faster and you can close the gap without having to use the external tanks. Um, and then finally, when it comes to the utility spot, I recommend using fire suppressions for a few reasons. Uh, one is that you're using stealth, so it takes longer for lock-ons to actually uh, acquire their locks. So you can feel relatively safe without using flares. Um, if you do get hit, you can repair yourself, which is a fairly new change, um, just by activating the fire suppression, thus making up for the loss of nanite auto repair, which you gave up for stealth. Uh, and then finally, by using the racer frame, you're likely to take more damage in a dogfight than you would using the dogfight or hover frames, because you lose out on some maneuverability in the air break, so the fire suppression can keep you alive a little bit longer to make up the difference there. So that's going to be your basic loadout. You're fast, you're sneaky, and you're designed to get the jump on your opponents. So with that in mind, there's two primary ways that I like to use this loadout. The first of which is to fly really high and to monitor below for those targets that you're going to be coming in. Um, you know, they hopefully come in a little bit lower. Not too many people fly at the flight ceiling. You're then going to swoop down, get behind your target, and unleash all six of your rockets, then switch to your rotary and empty the clip, then switch back to the coyotes, and basically just rinse and repeat until they're dead. Now, remember, to try and engage um, your target as close as possible, so sometimes you're going to have to wait and really close the gap, uh, but you want to wait until you're close enough to reliably land all of your coyotes. Um, now, I prefer to use this when I'm trying to do, like, area denial. You know, if your faction's doing battle below, you kind of stay on the outliers then. Um, you can kind of avoid some lock-ons from the ground, uh, and then your goal is really just to keep the enemy air away. Uh, you know, on slower times on the servers, um, I've also sometimes like hung out by the enemy warp gates at very high altitudes, or sometimes even waited on the ground with a decent camo, um, just keeping an eye on the gate. And then when you uh, see an enemy fighter leave, you just kind of sneak in behind them, and you can kind of take them out on their way to wherever they're going. Might be a little bit cheap, but it's kind of fun, especially when times are slow. The other place I find this setup pretty effective is when I'm flying in an air wing or with your squad. Um, when there's a lot of other air up, you have less concern of enemy fighters getting on your tail and ruining your good run. Um, you guys also can kind of watch each other's backs, so um, then again, the lock-ons are also very effective and can kind of help others get their kills, or you can just flat out be a vulture to steal the kills and get some assist credit. Um, you can also deal a lot of damage with this setup, and having others around to help protect you um, kind of highlights some of the effectiveness of these types of situations in this loadout. 
Now, the situations you want to try and avoid with this kit, um, the ambush setup that we're talking about here, um, and even though it's still pretty effective, you know, a somewhat effective setup for this, is the one-on-one -on -one head to head engagements with good pilots who are using afterburner tanks. They can somewhat reliably avoid your rockets, um, then they can outmaneuver you uh, because they've got the additional afterburner fuel. So it's not an impossible battle, but it's a bit of an uphill battle against a worthy opponent. Um, the situation you really want to avoid, and this really applies in most situations, is being tremendously outnumbered. Um, you've got a lot of weapons at your disposal, so it's not a lost cause, but you're going to have a hard time keeping up with someone on your tail, so try to avoid it if at all possible. So that's basically it. Uh, I told you I wanted to try and keep it quick, but that's the first loadout here, uh, my coyotes, which I call the uh, ambush setup. Um, and that's the one I like to use when I'm using coyotes. So if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, if you found this helpful, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and then stay tuned for uh, several more of these ESF loadout videos. Appreciate you watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.